The sermon for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 31 to 44. Uh, the sermon is entitled, What is This Word? Grace, grace, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And so by his word, the demon was thrown down in their midst. What a radical miracle this was. And many were amazed as they said to one another, What is this word, this word, what is this word? That is, what is this word compared to any other word there is? What a great question this is. What is this word? I think to understand this very question, we need to ask another question, and that is, who is the giver of this word? The very same question we asked at Bible study on Wednesday in regards to Noah being, being given that very command to build the ark and the type of wood to be used or how many levels were to be made or the exact dimensions that were to be had upon this very ark, a laundry list it seemed to be for anyone to fulfill. Yet Noah did not quip or question or doubt. He didn't take any shortcuts but rather by God's design and command and by His word, as it reads in Genesis 6, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded. Nothing more, nothing less. Simply followed in faith this very word, because this word for Noah in faith held authority by the one who is the author of the word, and that is our Lord who gives Noah this command, and there he did it. And likewise today, the demons, they address the giver as the Holy One of God. In other words, in this conversation with God, there they knew who the victor would be. The demons very well knew that whether it was yesterday, today, or tomorrow, the victor is Jesus the Christ the word that was given that day. The word. What is the word, we may ask? Because we hear a lot of words in life. I wonder how many syllables we hear during the week. Too many, honestly. Because we are constantly being catechized, taught by the world, whether we know it or not. As we turn on the radio, we are being taught as we click on YouTube in that endless rabbit hole, right, we call it, we are being taught. Reading our social media feed, whether we like it or not, we are being taught. Right? Looking at our smartphone, right, you might just thinking that you're looking at a screen, but actually you're being taught. Your favorite TV show, there you're being taught. Even a football game with all the advertisements that you, that you see, there you are being taught by the many talking heads in our lives. Because there are many talking heads in our lives. So many words that, that flow into our ear, into the heart and mind as they shape us and define who we are. And of course, in the synagogue that day, there was a man who lived in this noise, right? There was no on and off button for him. He lived and, and was possessed by this force of darkness, the endless chatter of the unclean spirits possessing his heart and mind, the constant attack as he was entrenched in this debilitating spiritual affliction. See, there was no way around it. 
Human authority played defeat in this battle. Human authority had no say in this fight. And there that day, the giver of the word, Jesus Christ, reversed the curse. Shut down the chatter and silenced the demons in their midst. Spiritually speaking, for us, the, the chatter is all too real this day. For all of us, there's a lot of noise in our hearts and minds, even right now as you are sitting here. It might not be loud and blaring, but there are thoughts and distractions, worries and uncertainties, all this very noise that is trapping you in this very existence. In this world as we live it, technology is increasing, isn't it? The access to information continues to overflow, and that's an understatement. It's more than just an overflow. It's a, a deluge of information that is constantly being thrown at us. And, and though this is a benefit in many respects, it is. It also could be a detriment as well. Because there, as this fire hydrant of information that's just continually being flushed at us and, and pushed on us, there we can so easily be enveloped by the world of flesh and, of course, the devil. And throughout all these words, lost is the sound of silence. To be silent as we hear the words that we need to hear. See, the devil is never empty-handed. He brings the megaphone, blaring not on medium volume, but full maximum volume. The evil foe never stops bringing the noise, even brings the newer noise, and even the newer, newer noise. Relentless he is, as this megaphone is on 24-7, 365 days out of the year, all in hopes of tearing you away from the precious word of our Lord. And there he does it with deceptive words, distracting and turning us from the very word of God. And yes, it's subtle. His strategy is to impart to you that God's word, well, it's just like any word in this life. The devil says, as he tries to be the giver of the word, all the other outlets those that give your words, well, they're just as important, and you need not hear the word of God time and time again. Well, I guess you could hear it, the devil says, when it's convenient to you, when you feel that you need to hear it, or, or when you have time, right, or when it's convenient. And this is the endless temptation that we face as the devil tries to turn us from this very word. Because how easy it is for us to turn <clears throat> in the midst of these very words of God to the instant gratification that this world offers us. Right? Everything of this world, covetous desires, idolatry, materialism, trusting in our own selves, in our own flesh, in our own being, making truth relative. We see this world continually trying to teach us all these talking heads voicing their own words as if it is the truth, as if it is the gospel. And so easy we fall to it as our eyes widen, as our hearts open up to these corrupt words of the flesh. What we listen to matters because, friends, words do matter. And therefore, it's a time to be called to repentance because you and I very well know how easy it is to grab hold of the sinful world, words of this dark world and how truly tempting they really are. Right now, in this very moment, as we are here together, words matter. Because there, that day in the synagogue, words mattered. There, the man needed the only one word that could save him. Words matter, and that is Jesus. 
the powerful word, the authoritative word, his command, be silent and come out of him. This was not an option nor a choice for the demons. No, they were cast out by the powerful word of God. That is what the word of God gives to each and every one of you. It is the same. So what is the word? That in the midst of all the noise that we face, all the chatter, the sound waves that wash us to and fro, there Jesus silences them all. That by this very word, he points to what you need to hear. From sin to grace, from death to life, from the law to the gospel, from uncertainty and doubt to the blessed assurance and, and, and gift of our Lord Jesus. This is what you need to hear. What is the word? This word that you hear is full of authority. That means what God gives, he delivers. There is no doubt, there is no if. But the authority of Christ, who gives you the very word of absolution, that your sins are forgiven. The words that give you life, that gives you eternal peace, that shapes you by this very word of the gospel. Because these words are from the giver. Not just any giver, but from Jesus Christ alone. The words that flow from the very work of the cross to which he died for each and every one of you. The words that silence the accusations, your greatest critic, the devil, by his very work, Jesus crushes and silences the words of the evil foe. There is no fight when there Jesus is because the Lord conquers, the Lord triumphs, the Lord defeats. All by his very word, crushing the head of Satan himself. What is this word? This word is full of grace. We know our sin that is ever before us. We are here because we know what we need to hear. That in our helpless and broken predicament ever since the fall, the separation from God, our Lord sends his Son, the Holy One of God, the one who knew no sin, but charged himself with our sin, bearing the weight of sin upon himself, the wrath of God upon himself. Only to finish this the only way he could as a Savior, and that is at the cross. This is the word. Reversing the curse, shedding his blood, the very sacrifice that none of us deserve. But yet our Lord, by his love for you, covers you by his blood, <coughs> washing away all your sins. This is the word that you need to hear. The sweet, sweet sound of the gospel. The sweet, sweet sound as we see Jesus healing the afflicted in the town that day to see what Jesus brings to the table, not just for that town, but for all people. That he was sent for this purpose, to save all the world by his death and resurrection. This is the sweet, sweet sound, the very word of Christ for each and every one of you. And here you are in the midst of these very words of life giving you the life-giving word, the eternal life that flows from his empty tomb, where there right now you know as you are defined and shaped by this very word that you have life in his name, that you are a child of God, that you are redeemed and blessed, and, and God is with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you, for this is what the empty tomb proves to you, that in your baptism you are indeed saved. See, friends, we, we hear a lot of things in this life. Just to account for all the things that you've heard this week. But here we are in God's Word, gathering together and dwelling upon that very question as they did that day in the town. What is this Word? Who is the giver of this Word?
like the potter to the clay, our Lord shapes us by this very word. That this word is your strength, is your song, is your help. As the Holy Spirit has called you to this gospel, enlighten you with, this, with these gifts, sanctified and kept you in the true faith. Friends, I know we are going through many things in this world today, but here we are together in the Word. All the chaos, all the chatter, all the things that we are distracted by, here we are together in the Word. This is not just another two-hour gap in your week, but this is the Word that is given to you, the words of Christ, the giver of this very Word who says to you, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as a world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word that you need to hear. It is Jesus for you. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, please rise as you are able.